Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I want to give you a quick summary of my Atlas strategy for the league start of 3.24. Given all the changes, including the addition of tier 70 maps, makes it more than abundantly clear that the main focus has to be progressing through the Atlas as quickly as possible. And my strategy is centered around exactly that. I think it's important to also pick up some rares while you're, while you're trying to, to make your way through maps, which is why I think it's a good idea to get the additional chance to encounter Junior maps. The Immortal Syndicate encounters will give you a ton of rares with Veiled modifiers, which are otherwise hard to access early on. And even if the rares don't turn out to be well rolled, you can start accumulating the Crafted modifiers, which I personally always prefer over having to, to go on trade or better on TFT to access these modifiers. One of the most important things for Atlas passive tree progression is to increase the amount of maps you're doing and not just the amount, but also the tier of the maps, right? And as such, you wanna, wanna spec into pretty much all of the notables that give you a chance to for your maps to roll a tier higher. The first one would be shaping the mountains. After that, I would make my way to the center, go through expect the unexpected, mostly because the small notes here give you an additional chance for a Kirok mission on completion. Now this Atlas tool hasn't been properly updated. This now actually gives you 2% instead of one. The same is also true for commissioned officer, which no longer gives you one additional Kirok mission per day. Instead, it now just grants 6% chance to grant an additional Kirok mission on completion. Very valuable, in my opinion. You also get direct access to shaping the world and these two um, higher map tier chance nodes. And while you're here, I would also recommend getting expert reconnaissance because you don't just want to get Kirok missions, but also Atlas scouting reports to reroll the, um, the missions that you're being offered. After that, I would make my way for shaping the skies, right? It's just higher chance to find a maps with a tier higher. And after that, go for a planar tactician for even more Atlas scouting reports and for scouting reports to have a chance to drop as comprehensive scouting reports. Comprehensive scouting reports don't just reroll all of your missions, but also add additional missions, which give you a much higher chance of encountering something, a map that you haven't done yet, right? The note on the other side, solidarity is nowhere near as good. I would still take it right afterwards, not just because you get additional Kirok missions, but it also increases the amount of Atlas scouting reports you find. After we have allocated all of the progression notes early on, we can start investing into a league mechanic. I started out with Legion last league and I had a blast with it. Legion gives you access to bubblegum currency, maps, items, and later on even six links via Geomancer incubators. Now, if you plan on pushing, six links are a valuable source of income and of course also a cost factor for your build, right? The faster you are, the more expensive these will be. So having some sort of league mechanic that will give you six links on a semi-deterministic basis is pretty good. The other thing with Legion is that um, you stay pretty much on the right side for the most part with this strategy, meaning you can also get Test of Loyalty. Test of Loyalty gives you a 100% chance to gain an additional rank when executing Mortal Syndicate members, meaning you speed up the Mortal Syndicate progression significantly. Now, the crafting benches no longer exist. Instead, we're getting some currency and a ton of scarabs. Outside of that, you also eventually get to encounter Katarina, Katarina has interesting uniques. The staff is somewhat interesting early on. I think what's much more interesting, however, is the Devouring Diadem. This will be very expensive on League Start. So getting, getting a couple of these early on will definitely boost the currency you make. The other thing is that Katarina is now the exclusive source of Veil Chaos Orbs, which might not be super expensive on League Start. I'm not quite sure about that one yet, but they will definitely gain in value as the League progresses because people need, well, what used to be the Ashling Slam to craft high-end gear. You can also flesh out your tree by allocating the remaining Legion nodes. Once you've done that, I personally think it's probably sensible to get the Searing Exarch nodes. 
as long as you've hit tier 14 maps, which you definitely should have at this point. Both uh, Word of the Exarch and Wrath of the Cosmos are very valuable. And also be a bit dangerous, right? Especially Wrath of the Cosmos. But that just is what it is. Now, I'm not quite sure what we're getting from Searing Exarch instead of the Awakened Sextons. My guess is probably some sort of Scarab, maybe just Veiled Scarabs, which is what the existing Awakened Sextons are going to be converted to. Either way, Searing Exarch is usually superior early on because of the bubblegum currency. It's not just Awakened Sextons that they used to award you with but also Chaos Orbs, Orbs of Regret, things that are valuable on League Start. Now, this isn't a whole lot of notes, so whatever you have left should be going towards the Necropolis nodes. I probably would start out with one of these two nodes, um, Condensed and Decisive Souls, right? 100% chance, 100% increased chance for meta modifiers and 100% increased chance to have modifier tier rating crafting outcomes should be very valuable in my opinion. The other thing that's probably interesting is Geminate Haunting because it gives you another 25% chance for a corpse. And obviously you just need as many corpses as possible. I'm not quite sure about this one, the Gravekeeper's Boon. We don't know yet what that does, at least I don't. <laughs> if it turns out to be useless, just don't allocate it. On the other side, we have the Devout Pursuit for an increased chance to encounter the vaulted modifiers and on the other node we have the haunted modifiers are tier higher now this will increase the loot but also make the map more dangerous if you're struggling a bit early on i would probably not allocate this and just go through the left side of of the wheel but in general as you build scales you should be able to do that eventually of course you don't have to do legion if you don't want to you could alternatively do expedition the tree layout is somewhat similar you also stay on the right side of the tree for the most part. Expedition doesn't give you a high chance to, to get these six links. So if you do go with Expedition, you're going to have to, to buy these, or at least one of them early on. I'm not quite sure how competitive it is going to be. Expedition can also be a bit dangerous, but so is Legion, I guess. The main difference here is, is that it's not as map focused because you're going to have a chance to, a higher chance to, to get these to get the logbooks, right? Early on, not the biggest fan of doing logbooks. They can be pretty dangerous. Also, the low end logbooks are usually not the craziest. So yeah, this is more of a thing for, for expedition lovers than it is a general recommendation of mine. Of course, you could do a completely different thing as well. You could just do Blight. Blight is a much more relaxing leap mechanic early on. The thing with Blight is, while it is more relaxing, it's also less rewarding. You really only start making a lot of currency with Blight once you start doing tier 14 maps. That is simply because in tier 14 maps or higher, you can you can find golden oils, and this is obviously one of the main source of income. Just like Expedition, it's also less map-centered because obviously Blight is not just about finding golden oils in maps. This is actually something you're not going to do a lot. Instead, it's about finding blighted maps. And the blighted maps are similar to regular maps in the sense that you're also going to be able to find golden orbs in tier 14 and higher maps. So it really only starts kicking in later, which I personally think is going to slow you down a bit in terms of the amount of currency you're making. At the same time, as I said before, it's much more relaxing. That is the general thing I like about Blight, right? It's also good if you are playing minion builds that are more static let's say um, Skeleton Mages, for example. If you're playing something like Legion or Expedition, it can be a bit more obnoxious. I feel like Expedition is probably fine because the armies tend to be rather large in maps that actually um, work well for Legion. There's one more advantage that Legion has over the other strategies. There's also another advantage that Legion has over the other mechanics. While all of the strategies now have 100% chance to contain the league mechanic in question. Legion doesn't just have one encounter. Even, even when you invest all of your points, you're already going to be able to encounter two Legion monoliths every now and then. And once you have managed to, to you know, accumulate a bit of currency, you can actually start forcing an additional Legion encounter. And that is a huge boon, something that the other two mechanics simply don't have. Now, this isn't going to be super relevant early on, right? As I said, it's 
probably only going to be relevant once you start doing tier 15, tier 16 maps, maybe even later. But it is something that I personally found noteworthy. In general, these strategies should only be played for like day one or day two, right? You want to really flesh out your, your atlas. And once you've done that, you want to transition to a more invested strategy. Which strategy you choose is up to you. As I mentioned before, I'm going to do the Legion strategy. I have, of course, left the Atlas trees to all three strategies in the description of this video. As I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to live stream my League start with Barma on the Necromancer on Twitch. And if you want to ride along, you can find my socials, including Twitch, in the description of this video and on my channel page. I hope you have a great League start. Until next time.